So I thought I would take a look at some of the samples that I have. So I have some different Geiger counters here. Uh, this is an old CDV700 that was modified by G-Electronics, which is basically a replacement of the electronics inside um, with some slightly more modern stuff. Uh, but it still uses the same display, which is kind of cool. Um, they add a couple LEDs uh, and some ways to scale it differently. Um, although really the most important thing in a Geiger counter isn't really this part here. Electronics are simple. It's really the sensor. Um, and this is a relatively good um, pancake probe, um, which is really good for alpha, beta, and gamma. Uh, and they have a couple other ones here. Uh, this one's actually good for background radiation, so it shows about 0.19 microsieverts per hour, which is a little higher than it would be here normally. That's because of all the stuff sitting here. Um, but so I'll walk through a couple samples. This has a, a knob on it for changing scale, times one, times 10, times 100. And so you can see we're you know somewhere in the 40 to 50 counts per minute right now, um, which is a little above what it would normally be, but that's just because of the stuff sitting here. Um, so I'll walk through a couple different samples. Uh, these are a couple pieces of um, uh, rock that contain some thorium. And so they have some, actually, crab over activity. I thought I'd come down a little bit there. Yes, that's around almost 2,000 counts per minute. 2,500, maybe getting as high as 2,800, almost 3,000 counts per minute. So that's a pretty good piece of thorium in there. A couple of these guys here, that's a little less than that one. Maybe around 1,000 or so. I think this is a little piece of uh, uranium ore, or rock that has uranium ore in it. So that one's pretty quiet, maybe a couple hundred counts per minute. Uh, this is some um, thorite, so there'll be some thorium in here. Ooh, wow, that goes off scale there. <laughs> Let's go up to 100 here. Let that come down slowly. Ooh, it's over 10,000 counts per minute, so that's pretty good. That's quite a bit there. Here I have some old um, lantern mantles, which used to have uh, used to have thorium in them, and these are the old ones that have thorium, and so they're they're pretty good. Oh. Well, almost fifteen thousand. Yeah, a bunch of those is pretty warm. And I have some large pieces of. Uh, or that have some thorium in them. These guys are around, what, 10,000? Yeah, 10, 12,000, these are all pretty similar. Oh, that one's <laughs> quite a bit more. It's almost 30,000, over 30,000. Hmm. I should keep that one over there. Uh, and then I also have some um, tubes. Let's take out one of these here. These are kind of funny. Uh, this is U.S. Army, U.S. Navy tube January. Uh, it's a 1B22 tube accepted in June of 1945. So these are in World War II. And they used a uh, radium as part of the exciter mechanism of these tubes. And radium has a half-life of about 1,600 years. Um, eventually decays into polonium and a few other pretty good, pretty hot objects. Let's see what this guy has in it, so. Just that isn't as much, probably 4,000, 5,000. We'll get to 10,000 there. So maybe 10,000 on that guy. I have a bunch of boxes of these guys. And I think the hottest thing that I have uh, is this box here, um, which is a 1B37. I have a couple of these. 
Uh, and these have, I think, quite a bit of radium in them. And these are encased in these steel cases. And so if they were cracked open, uh, they'd probably be a little hotter. But we'll see how these guys play out. Uh, yeah, that's pretty much off the scale there. Um, we can do times two on that scale, so we can get to 60,000, so. That's 20, approaching 40. So about 40,000 counts per minute for each one of these. Uh, which is, that's pretty hot. You wouldn't want to keep that around too close to you. That one's even more. <laughs> yeah, about 50,000, 55,000 counts per minute. So that's, those are pretty toasty. Let's cover back on here. So we're gonna put these guys away for now. I keep these guys in a little container lined with lead. Because uh, even just having them here uh, in the shop, just if, they, if I just store them in a normal box, you can pick it up on the Geiger counter from 20, 30 feet away. Uh, slight, slight difference in background radiation. I think so, so just a few of the things I have on my little radioactive collection. I do have some cesium samples as well for um, for calibration. Uh, and it's kind of fun to calibrate the meters and see how, you know, get them all calibrated the same. Um, and the actual probes make a big difference. These, this is an, uh, another pancake probe. Um, and this guy is also pretty sensitive compared to these older style with just the normal tubes in them. Uh, and most of these guys here, these newer ones, these have the little Geiger Mueller tubes in the side here. Um, but these are also good for running background radiation, certainly. So, so there you go. Uh, that's another thing from the shop.